We live in a twilight world and man, this video I'm about to do might just be just, it, it, it might just be too tricky because I might even bamboozle myself with trying to explain it, but it's an interesting theory if you're, um, you know, interested in, in time travel and and the, the twin earth theory and all this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, but it, it's, it's one of these topics that Unless you've kind of looked into it before, it probably won't make sense. I think if this topic is brand new to you, it's just going to sound like complete gobbledygook. But if you've been looking into, um, you know, the theories of time travel, it won't seem that alien. But anyway, let's get started, okay? And by the way, this is not a flat Earth discussion, right? I'm just using this here picture of Earth because it's the only picture I could get on, on, on Pixar, okay? It doesn't matter whether it's a flat Earth, a round Earth, a donut Earth. Uh, a cube earth, it, uh, it doesn't matter, okay, this is not a flat earth discussion, so please don't come at me saying the earth is not flat, or sorry, the earth is flat, or not flat, or whatever, I don't really care, the shape is irrelevant, this is purely just a visual, okay, so a lot of the new ages, and even not, e not new ages, even just science fiction writers, have often talk about a twin earth, uh, the birth of a new, a new, a new earth, and some people being stuck on the old earth and some people being stuck or going off to the new earth where things are different and so on and so on. Anyway, so if you know the film Tenant, let me, let me uh, grab some pictures. If you know the film Tenant, you'll understand the red and the blue and, and how it works, uh, basically one timeline, okay? In the Tenant universe, there's only one timeline that you can zip up and down uh whereas in most kind of like um films and fiction and whatever there's this idea of a multiverse and with a multiverse there's there's a timeline and if you make a decision it will split off into a new timeline and it's all going in one direction now what i like about tenant is none of that exists it's one timeline and you can only zip up and down it and it comes with consequences and there are problems and issues and it's not as easy as like how the films make out like films i'm talking like back to the future and bill and ted and all that kind of stuff where you just you know you jump in a vehicle of some kind you punch in where you want to go and it just zoop, takes you there it ain't like that in tenant red represents moving forward blue represents moving backwards and purple is a space in between and it's this kind of here, this, this technology that exists, what they call a turnstile. And if you jump in it, it spins you around, it spits you out. You're now going backwards through time. But from your perception, it's always the now. Whether you're going forwards or back, it doesn't matter. You will always experience reality as the now. But you see this guy here, the protagonist... Once he goes in, he comes out. Although he's experiencing the now, everything around him is going backwards, okay? Because he's now blue. Now, this gives a lot of... Um, kind of credibility to the red and blue um, theories out there. Because, you know, you see red and blue everywhere, right? Labour versus Conservatives, Republicans, Democrats. Uh, you know, a lot of Freemasonry is revolved around red and blue and, you know, the star Sirius. Apparently it's red when it's coming closer, it's blue when it's going further away. Maybe it's the other way around, I don't know. Um, but yeah. So I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, what I suggest is... Uh, this guy here, Welby Coffee Spill. He's done some great kind of visual representations of of Tenant and how it works and how that time travel kind of works. I might even watch a video now. But um, yeah, so this is a video by Welby Coffee Spill and he's done loads of videos. So I've got to give him credit. I hope he doesn't mind me using his videos, but he's done a really good job here. Now, what's really interesting, this is, I, I think this is his first ever video is that it's 3 minutes and 33 seconds. One of them kind of significant numbers. Now, I don't know if he's deliberately done that or it's just, you know, just how it's, per, you know, t 
turned out. But that number there, three, 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 is very important. But well, that's another topic for another day. So let's watch this video, and I'll try and like go through it as well, and then we'll get back to the twin Earth theory. Let's go. So as it says, right, now, you only experience things now, in the now. And that's from your consciousness, right? Your consciousness only experiences the now. Let's crack on. Let's imagine our now as we travel forward through time normally. We can only see and experience what is in our now. Let's see what Neil, the observer, the, the protagonist goes through the turnstile. So let me just stop there, because it's moving quite fast, this video. So that's Neil, that's the protagonist. Now, here's the thing. If, if, if there's two of you, say the protagonist and Neil, and one of you goes through the turnstile, he vanishes to the person that's on the red, that's moving forward in time. He's gone, he's vanished because he's now going backwards through time. Now, this is where Tennant gets interesting, because if we were to do this, let's say in a, in a real experience, we were to do this, if your buddy went through, I don't know how he'd catch up with you again. And I don't know, perhaps you'd lose him forever. But anyway, that's a different topic. Let's carry on watching. The protagonist inverted and is now streaming backwards through time, okay? So let's crack on with the video. <music> to Neil's eye, the protagonist vanished. No longer moving with his now. So, yet again, the us moving forward, the person moving forward, the observer moving forward would have seen the backwards version at the same time. They exist in the same reality. That's what you've got to understand, okay? All three exist in the now simultaneously and they can interact with each other, okay? Now it's getting interesting, right? So now we're going to see it from the point of view of the person that's gone back in time. And remember, it's always the now from your experience, but he's going backwards in time now. And I'll just read this. Inverted protagonist now 
line flows in the opposite direction, streaming into Neil's past. Neil being the observer. <laughs> So here's what I want to, the thing is, right, is that if you go in the turnstile and go through, right, let's say you want to go three days backwards in time, you have to travel three days backwards in time. And that's three days you will age and stuff. So in this world of tenant, time travel is not as simple as, as like I said earlier, it's not as simple as the whole... Back to a future style, Bill and Ted style of just appearing, teleporting back to wherever you want. You've got to get there. Which means you can only ever really, when you think about it, go back. Let's say, let's say you're 50 years old. And really, you're, you know, you're only going to live to about 80. You've only got that space between 50 and 80 to go backwards in time. So you're limited how far you can go back. And then, of course, midway through, you can... And, and, of course, in this reality, you need to have what they call inverted air. Air from this world in a can that allows you to breathe it. Because apparently you can't breathe the air here. Because the air is moving backwards. So it comes with a lot of um, conditions and problems. and Which, to me, is more realistic. Because, yet again, it's, it's nature, it's a universe putting limitations on on our human experience now let me go back to my original picture now what a lot of people have theorized and even it ties into the film tenant is that at some point in the future the climate change maniacs instead of putting the humans through the, the turnstile they put the earth through the turnstile so they make the earth start going backwards in time, which means everything would start getting younger, right? Because it's a different story when it's objects. So in a bid to fix the dying earth, they they invert the earth, but not the people on it, and earth is going backwards in time. This, of course, means there would be two earths. If they manage to pull that off, inverting the Earth, you would now have a twin Earth existing parallel to the Earth going backwards. Because you've got to remember, this is an object. Now, this might explain the crazy shit that's been going on, right, over the last three years. Because, let me add another little picture here. If red is going forward, blue is going backwards, there's always the purple in between. Now, one thing you could say about the last three years, 2020 onwards, is been purple as hell. You had the George Floyd riots, which were, you know, purple everything. They were called the Purple Revolution, I think they were calling it. You know, if you were keeping your eye on the mainstream media, everything was purple. Your politicians were wearing purple ties. News segments were had a purple hue. Everything was purple. Purple this, purple that. Now, my good friend Human Vibration covers the, the colour purple a lot. And purple is like, in the world of signs and symbols, considered the colour of illusion and, and deception. But, you know, if if the earth was going to be put backwards, there would be a purple phase. And I think that was it. So I'm just putting out there that perhaps this is the explanation for why things are so f kind of crazy at the moment. The earth has been inverted and is somehow going backwards. Now, we're not, I'm not, you're not, none of us are experts in time travel, right? So we don't know really know how they're doing it and stuff. But I've got a feeling it, it, if they've got a technology to do it, it, it involves the kind of current skyline we have at the moment, which is like a a whitish blue instead of the very darker blue we had back pre-2020. And the sun is a white sun. So I don't know if somehow they've used... You know, I say they. It might be Mother Earth itself that's doing this. 
It might be the gods that are doing this. It might be the universe that's doing whatever it's got to do to kind of like, you know, keep the matrix running. I don't know, man. This is just theories I'm toying around with, okay? <clears throat> but yeah, if you just listen to like my last video, or even if you're just kind of like out there listening to the woo-woo of what people are saying, a lot of the, the most common thing that's coming up is the colour of the sky and what they're calling whiteouts. Now, this whiteout business might be them putting the earth, and perhaps all of us on it, I don't know. Like, if everything gets inverted, it wouldn't look different to us, right? Because you only experience the now, and it's only when you get inverted on your own, away from everything else, is when it will look crazy. If everything gets inverted, it will just look like the now. You're still going to age, you're still going to get old, and so on and so on. But yeah, I'm just kind of like connecting dots here and tying it all in, especially with like the twin earth theory. And I don't know, I'm just trying to think outside the box of like what's going on like with the atmosphere as well. And I think, you know, the... Um, what we would call the Starlink. You know, what they're trying to say is a load of satellites on string, which obviously it wasn't. I think the Starlink might have something to do with that because that all happened in the, in the year of like 2020 onwards, right? You would just see these train tracks of stars whizzing around the planet. Um, I've seen it in my own eyes and it was kind of very, very... Um, very profound, you know, seeing it, you know. And that might have been the technology they were using to to invert time. I don't know. Because if you if you if any of you have seen Starlink out there, you'll know that um you know you'd see these things in the sky and they were the same colour and size as the stars above. Now how is that possible? I don't know. I definitely think it was some kind of technology or some kind of... Um... And you've got to remember, like, when I'm talking about technologies and someone doing this, I don't, you know, I'm not necessarily talking about the classic what every kind of conspiracy truther, truther thinks that, like, is a bunch of Illuminati sitting around a desk somewhere, you know, rubbing their hands together, thinking about how they can, like, fuck up the world. Some of this stuff is way beyond... The capability of humans, okay? You know, you've got to consider that there are certain factors um, beyond humans. What some, what the Greeks and the pagans might call gods. A god of the ocean. A god of the sky. A god of the sun. A god of the forest. And there's probably even a god of... Well, we know there's a god of time. He's called Kronos. But maybe there's two gods working together to move things back in time because that's what they got to do. Maybe these gods are not what we think, like how they're portrayed on the side of like a Greek vase as being like human-esque. Perhaps they are just operating systems that, you know, keep the matrix running and doing whatever they have to do. Anyway, I hope this video hasn't like um, been too kind of like boring. Maybe it has been, I don't know. And uh, yeah, it's just an idea. It's something I'm kind of like very interested in. Like, um, but anyway, we live in a twilight world and there are no friends at dusk.